Welcome. We are back. Finally. Did you miss it? Jeez. It's like a little vacation, I guess. Trying nah. to get our life back together. We've been crazy busy <laughs> preparing for the holidays, too. And I think so. we were just focusing more on the kids, too. And sometimes, you know, it just it gets, it, it gets too much. I feel like we do a lot. And um, this was a much needed break. I was sad, though. Time went by so fast, though. Yeah. Two months? Huh. Three. Yeah, three. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, should we show them what, we, what we've been sure. working on? Sure, go ahead. Okay, I want to show them first the Christmas stockings. All right, go for it. Okay, so if you haven't seen it, look at these Pendleton wool Christmas stockings. Like These are like extra large size. And then we have this one that is like fleece. And it has wool in the back, and you can hang them up, and it's an extra large as well. And then we have uh, little, like, mini Christmas stockings. So you can hang them up on your Christmas tree. The little cuties. Look at these! <laughs> Look at them, they're so cute. Mm. And they're white, red, orange, oh, brown, like light brown colors. Yeah, these are so cute. They are available on our website. We also released this headband, so it's like, it's all black, but then like in the sun, it'll show the tribal pattern on it. I forgot the name of this one. Black Shadow. Black Shadow is listed on our website as well. Um, okay. Yeah, and then we got leggings, new ones. Cause we've been going along with Powell House too, and oh, yeah. our vending partner, 2941 in your teep you did a collaboration with them they've been our little traveling buddies they're from all over from above seattle washington washington coming all over from california and they went to our palo tuli bishop and then chick chancy so mm -hmm. we hit three palos up this whole past um, yeah a month a little month over a half yeah and it's cool oh, to have another family the leggings did a collaboration with them Pretty, I like them. They're pretty cool. I love them too. Loves them. So we have them in white, and then it has like yellow, gray, black designs on it. Mm -hmm. Then we have a darker tone here, gray and black with red, and like light gray on here. Shadow arrows and spark arrows. They're Obviously, color. They're the same, but just turned around different colors. Yeah, they're squat proof. Um, <laughs> they're very stretchy. Um, I mean, they're, they're a nice feeling. I love these. I love how they came out. Uh, they are available on our website as well. And the 2941 last thing, in, in your teepee. Check out on their Instagram. Check them out. Wow, they're pretty funny. They're Some cool. cool shirts. And it was nice to see another family that travels and goes to sets up. And, you know, we have like the same similarities. We could relate on things being... I don't know. I thought it was cool. Yep. And that's his new friend. Oh, I know. Their daughter's <laughs> five years old. So, Yanissa had a best friend, like, the whole the Jackson whole three too. weekends. <laughs> and then lastly, don't forget, we have ear warmers listed on our website. They're starting to get cold. So, get yours while they last. Some of them are reversible as well. So, you get, like, two for one. Uh, make sure you check that out. And don't forget, we have our... Mm. Um, our discount code. Should be what is it? Stick? Talking stick. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Dang, it's been a while. I'm... I gotta remember all New these. stickers. Oh, yeah, the other stickers, there you too. Go. Flagration. Right there. Cool. Those are up stickers and a t shirt and Posters? poster. Along with that poster up top right there at the yeah, family. Yeah, like, literally. <laughs> I forgot. We have, look, our family drawing right here. Whom, um, and, uh, um, there's Quintanero. He's a graphic, no, graphic, no, uh, is he a graphic designer? Yeah, graphic designer, animator. Animator, all that, yeah, too. it was so cool. We're so, trying to work on a little book together, too, but I gotta write the script. A little native comic book or something. So In the future. So Johnny, <laughs> me, Jackson, and Yanessa were wearing our traditional outfits from Guatemala, and of course, Johnny's wearing his traditional. Northern <laughs> traditional outfit, and I it, can I explain how I came up with this sure. or how it happened. It was just kind of random. I told um, his cousin Andres, I was like, "Hey, do this for me," and 
um, I just went for it, and then I didn't tell Johnny about it, and then it was one day. Once we once we finally got done with it, with the little details and editing, I showed him, and he loved it. He loved it, and then he added our logo in the back, and I was just doing it for fun for him, well for us. And he was like, "Now we gotta share it with our OIT family," and there it is. It's so cute. Two cultures. Two traditions coming together as one family. Ah! So yeah, that's listed on our website as well. Damn, we did do a lot. Well, it has been three months. Okay, but... With our guests coming on, you yeah. see the beautiful painting in the background. Right there. All sweat and paint, blood, tears, whatever. We'll find out right now once we get them on. Let's see, Joseph, where are you at, bud? There you are. Joseph, get ready, man. And Jackson, he's alive and awake now. <laughs> Did you miss Is he these? bigger now? Oh, yeah, I know. I forgot that <laughs> you just woke up, too. Say hi, hey. <laughs> What's happening, man? Hi. Oh, that's, hi, how are you guys doing? I know, right? <laughs> well, we yeah. got it all together real quick. Once we got home, put everything together, we're okay now. Yeah. No, it's good. It's safe travels and, and, and happy travels. Yeah. I like it. Your little ones, they're so awesome. Like, <laughs> I could just start talking and they just like, what's going on? And that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah. He to feel included. <laughs> he is. Yeah. Smiles. Yeah, that's good. I think I, I remember being a kid and, and my grandpa would always call me a Chinaman and, uh, because I just talked. <laughs> and it was like, dude, it's, in my head, I thought I was talking normal, but I was probably talking a lot of like, blah, blah, blah. There you go. Like a little kid. <laughs> so I think they have everything in here. It's just learning how to operate the body. Right? And, and that's it. Yeah, that's true. I know sometimes yeah. they surprise me too. I'm like, oh, they understood what I said? Or like, I, yeah. And they just act on it. I was like, oh, okay. Oh, okay, they're not babies no more. Uh, no, no, no. But that's something I think all, all you know, grow, growing up, that's something we all figured out pretty quick. You know, once we start having little ones, it's almost like how, uh, how schools don't interact with kids. And it's like, when we interact with our kids, they listen, they, they're, they're, you know, and that's the same thing for, for traveling too. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Every, everything's that. good. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So, Ooh. okay. I'm so excited to talk and like, let's just stick, on subject and let's get it over yeah. here with sweat pan. Interesting. So let you do a um, okay. Hold on. Intro. Let's introduce ourselves first, and then you'll go next. So hi everybody. I'm Yandinito. I'm Cachica El Maya from my mom's side. Mexican from my dad's side. And Johnny Nito and Jackson Nito from the Tulip River Tribe. And then our <laughs> guest today <laughs> is Joseph, and he uh, does sweat let, let painting. Do he got it. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, my name's Joseph. I I think what I'm called is an urban native, and it's just it's because that the term comes from not being from the reservation. Um, but my uh, so my mom's uh, the Yaki, so the Laborn family that comes from Arizona, and then the McDonald family, from what I understand, that comes from this area in California. And then I had another grandma that she's the grandma that I my my, my mom's mom passed away when when I was two. And so the grandma we had was Grandma Betty Lewis. And so when we looked up Grandma Betty Lewis it, in Clovis, California, we never knew that it wasn't allowed. But she, she kept being Native very quiet. And it turns out that she was part of the Chichancy Council. Um, so if anybody's out there with the Chichancy, yeah, Grandma Betty Lewis, that was, our, that was my grandma. Our friend Chelsea, she lives up there from Clovis. The girl that was sitting next to us at uh, Chichancy Powell. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, it, yeah. She's from there. It's a, it's a strange place because you're, I grew up you, in that area. It was safer what, growing up. I'm, I'm 39 now. It was safer to be Mexican because if you were Indian, you just were ran out of town. Uh, Bernard Navarro is a professor at City College and he's a few years older than me, but he actually even remembers being arrested and he'll tell that story about being, you know, arrested, held overnight and then dropped back off in the morning. And so, it changed it, within the last 20 years. Um, growing up in that area changed. Uh, there's a woman named, I'm not going to put her name out there so nobody 
you know, gives her a hard time or follows her. But I met her in the gym, just like I met Johnny. Like this was one of those beautiful, beautiful moments. Right. And, uh, she, she's the woman who changed the hair code in Clovis, California. You are not allowed to have your hair past your earlobes or past your eyebrows. And uh, my brother was one of the guys. He wasn't allowed to graduate. He was actually assaulted by a, a, a teacher at Clovis High School because he had long hair. You know, I, you know, I wasn't kind of uh, allowed. My, my hair went in my 20s. So it wasn't. I kept my braids here instead of up here. Um, but yeah, that's the area that I'm from. Um, okay, cool. And, and that's, that's the time when nobody wanted to be native. <laughs> you know, I got, that. yeah, it was crazy. Well, the DeAnda family, um, John DeAnda and uh, Leticia DeAnda were the, she recognized my dyslexia when I went to a continuation school. She pulled me to the side and she was like, read this for me. And we just started talking and doing stuff. And she's like, hey, you, you native? And I was like, I, I don't know what, I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> and she goes, uh, she goes, why don't you come over? And uh, they had a sweat. It was uh, the, the neighborhood reported on them and they had to take down the sweat in their backyard. But they're the first ones that invited me to a sweat. And as a, as a yo -eme, we don't sweat. It's not something that I believe that, right? As far as I know, the Arizona, it's out there in the Arizona, Tucson area. I don't believe Yaki sweat, um, but okay. it's it's one of those things. My uh, Louis Laborn, that's my uncle. He'll go out there to the ceremonies in Arizona. I kind of stay in California. You know, it's comfortable. I get to run into run into awesome people. Yeah, that's actually how I met Johnny. That was a unique day. Uh, me and him were working out in the gym, right, getting it going, and I I noticed there was this native. It's just a native. And I didn't want him to feel like he was alone in the gym because I didn't see any other Indians. So I was like, hey, brother, I'm right here. If something, if something goes down, I got you, Aww. you know? And, uh, yeah, luckily no apocalypse, no zombies attacked. So we were good. Yeah. Um, so how did you start sweat painting? Or what is sweat painting? Okay, yeah, what is sweat yeah. painting? It's, um... If I were to think the visual representation of being a human being, um, because in today's world, we're really labeled. We kind of got to identify from elementary school. You, you, uh, you're forced to identify about third or fourth grade. You stick to your own little groups. And if you ain't part of that group and uh, just over the years of uh, being a male and being told you got to identify as a male, you got to identify as a, as your culture. So if you go to prison, Right. And none of us are ever going to there, but if you do, you got to identify, you know? Same and so thing, it was just same thing in the school, <laughs> same thing in the schools group up. And so that's when I, when I found out, even though that's who we were, um, my uncles and my families, I believe, you know, you said it one time, you don't follow, you know, you, you be you and you don't follow nobody. And for the last 500 <laughs> years, you like that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, fuck. my uncle told me that he, he hit me up and he was like, Hey man, you know, uh, you never, you never follow nobody. He goes that you stay your man. I had a grandpa that was, a, and I'm not, put, I love my grandpa. He's passed away, but I had to learn to, to understand, um, that he didn't have, uh, he was like the terms of womanizer. He was a biker. So he was just a, a, a biker, you know, and he didn't run with any groups and he just handled his own. I remember him, showing up drunk and him asking me to hold his little knife cuts because you know and he's like hey mijo you know come over here hold these and i'd have to hold his little thing where he drank and he calmed down you know because he just got into a bar fight and that was that was normalized to me um and i so sweat sweat painting came from that that idea that for the last 500 years europeans have been painting the same forever it, they they don't do anything it's the same and so I, with uh, the knowledge I had learned from the academics, uh, Kevin Stewart McGee uh, is an amazing painter, and he, he, he taught me the fundamentals of painting. And then I thought, well, I'm not going to follow you. <laughs> you know, so I did some mural work, but sweat paintings, the idea that you could work out and the sweat that drops can be kept. And normally when we see sweat land on the floor, we clean it up. But if it, you know, it takes an immense amount of energy to sweat, 
and it takes focus. Uh, sometimes your mental health is as a male, I didn't feel like I could cry. So I took my, my pain out in the gym. And one day I was just cleaning that sweat up thinking, fuck, no, this is not right. I, I, this can be something. And so I started in the beginning, I started sweating on canvases. I didn't have any of the fundamentals. So I actually went to school, went back to school for the fundamentals and uh, learned that watercolor paper. Uh, I learned what paints were safe for human skin, because if I'm working out and the sweat's landing, that paint's coming up. Oh. And, uh, Again, I have a friend who's his, uh, he has to deal with cancer because how he's been involved with the chemical of paint for so long. Damn. Yeah. And I mean, you go to Mesoamerica, you have like ochres, you have a uh, kind of, there's, they found different ways of harnessing natural colors for paint. Mm -hmm. You go into the Middle East and they have lapis lazuli. It's one of the only places, uh, there's a special cave and you had to know a guy to get you some lapis lazuli <laughs> and they, they crush it up and they give you this little, like on the side, here's some, here's some lapis lazuli right there. And, and this was unique to me that, that it's been around for so long and I'm not only going to create something new. It's not about me. Johnny was in the, you were in there sweating, right? Um, women sweat today in the forties, fifties, sixties, seventies, eighties, women glistened. They weren't allowed to sweat. I don't know if you ever heard that, like, you know, that's, that was still so unique. So I started originally doing it on paper and getting an abstract look. I wanted just that abstract drop, drop, drop. And then that developed into the message. The message behind would be like, what's behind me? How could I, how could I paint a picture and have it stand alone? I talk all right, walk, sometimes. Walk me, walk me through it, what you're doing. You just cover yourself all in paint. <laughs> oh shit! Oh my gosh! And then roll around in it. Is that what you're doing? I, I <laughs> wish this is this is something really unique uh, to even think to even think. So this is like powder. If anybody can see that in there, yeah. and that powder, as you're sweating and it's dropping off, and this one specifically, it's just a pile. I mean, I just I I literally took this shiny dome and started scraping off the sweat. Um, but because I don't want to say because I'm indigenous, but it feels like that. I mean, it feels like, because I'm, I'm I feel like I follow my instinct and I feel that I follow the nervous system here more than the nervous system I have here, which science today says now there is a nervous system we carry in our heart. It's why a lot of uh, people will hold their hand over here. It's because you, you can let this guide you before here. So sweating right here and then in push-up mode, I'll take a straw and blow it in different angles, controlling it. Huh. Then I'll powder in between the live sweat. So oh. as that live sweat's going on there, it can be dropped off. And the idea that once it's dropped off too, I don't have to continue to make that same mark. One of the things I could do is direct it. So these are just little drops and, and then the big drop here and then the colors. And so it's that awareness of, well, I know where it goes. I'm looking at a lot of times, here's a focal point and it spirals out. When you cut open an orange, when you cut open a strawberry, you have that same Fibonacci mm -hmm. sequence, that same universal ratio. If you're European or you're Anglo-Saxon, you're going to call it the golden ratio because you guys like going everywhere and taking gold. Uh, but it's, it's found in everybody's culture. It, it's prevalent. And so I'll look at that and direct the sweat. And then I have to keep it, you know, flat for a long time, let it dry and then layer it. So some of the sweat's lifting off of the canvas. So it has a very, I don't know, best way to say it is viscous. It's like, it's like it's off the page, which is also painters aren't like that. When you start studying, when I started studying artists, this is so new that I'm ending up pioneering something. It's, mm -hmm. it's almost like I'm pushing the forefront saying that artwork is now relevant. Uh, I'll call it the Mona Lisa. It's not relevant. The Mona Lisa's almost... Uh, something standing for a certain group of people where if you use human sweat, 
you're now saying that human beings are something that's beautiful. And so that's my biggest drive is to stop and say it's it's a practice. It's not just an art form, it's an art practice. That's cool. And then you draw a drawing, you know, whatever inspires you, and then you put on the sweat, right? Yeah, those drawings are unique. I, I don't think I'm going to do a coyote, but <laughs> just because today I had a very unique moment with a coyote crossing my path, and so it kept me home. But so the night before, uh, there's a night in a scorpion. I just felt like painting a scorpion. Mm -hmm. The next night, I walk into my home, and there's a little scorpion on the wall. Okay, so kind of, kind of like the universe, the, the universe, the creator, say, hey, paint me. You, good thing you did. Oh. <laughs> and uh, when I look up, what is a scorpion? And it, it's more like I'm using Google and I'm using, as an urban native, it's difficult to say, like, oh, I'm too busy. You're not too busy. Um, so I'll look up multiple things online. And one of the things a scorpion stands for is death and rebirth. It's literally the, the death of something and the rebirth of a renewal. Mm -hmm. And at the time in my life, yeah, it feels like that. And so uh, this, this is how I paint. The same with the deer. I'm up here in Tehachapi, and I've been seeing elk, not every day, but I've only been seeing elk kind of on the days that I want to feel dignified. I want to feel like I have a sense of integrity and I have morals and I got to stick to them. Even when I don't, I'm not that bad. Of a, I'm a human. I'm, I'm in a human body. And so I felt like seeing an elk in a ghost form was like seeing the ghost of my former self um, and trying to see if that ghost will come back to me. Um, that spirit will find me again. And so in this image, I mean, that's even why the sweat's along the heart. It's, it's in this region of where the heart beats because that's, that's in me. Um, and it, yeah, so that, there's, a, there's, a, there's a method to it but it doesn't have to be. It can just be sweat on a paper. But today I feel like it's supposed to be more. So I can stand up to the Mona Lisa. So I can stand up to the European theater and say, hey, you guys have been doing art well, but you're not, in you're not including everybody. There's not a, a equal playing field. Um, mm -hmm. And your education is bad. <laughs> the, um, I think we just, everybody that saw that last math teacher, I mean, dude, Put the, put the crap, right? That was scary. And, uh, and it was regular, one of those regular days. Regular day of school. Regular day of November. Right? <laughs> it, was, it blew my mind because immediately I had to post. Um, when I was in second grade at Sierra Vista, the teacher told my mom, your son's an Indian. He'll grow up to be a drunk. We have other kids who need attention. And I love my mother. My beautiful mother pulled me out of that school and put me into a new school. And we were able to identify dyslexia, illiteracy. There was a few things I suffered and had to get over. But the fact that that happened, and it's like we said, a regular, it's regular. And no other, that shouldn't be, you know, and, and luckily things have changed enough that we can now voice that. Mm -hmm. But the fact that we couldn't, the fact that a good generation of us had to suffer, why? You know, so even that's in my artwork, because instead of, um, I don't know if you guys have ever met Keith Turner, He's an elder from uh, the San Joaquin Valley. And Keith Turner caught me one time when I was really young. I was more of an activist. Uh, I used to go to, uh, I used to go to anything that involved people. I was ready to fight the establishment. <laughs> and he said that <laughs> like, it, it was just be an activist, be, yeah, be there on the front line. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, hold up, brother. You don't want to go to jail. And I was like, what? what, what? Maybe I do. You know, is there, a, is, is, is there a fight there? No. Oh, he goes, hey, why don't you go learn? He goes, you want to fight them, meaning uh, the European establishment? Then you should at least learn how to fight with what they fight with. On the pan. Yep. yep. Speaking. And I mean, he, he did the speaking like this because I believe what he meant was uh, the snake tongue. You know, learn the snake tongue. Don't learn these anymore. Mm -hmm. And so he was the reason I went back to school. And uh, I actually had Mrs. Lieberman. Mrs. Lieberman told uh, her dean in English that uh, she told me in class, you're too dumb for my class. I have another English class that you can be taught in and possibly pass. But I don't think you're going to pass this class. And uh, I got a B in her class. I did pass. But 
that yeah, that's the shit though. That's that weird stuff where it's like this is at a college at Fresno City College, and I don't believe she's there anymore. But you know, I I found myself getting more into artwork and less into the politics. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, the, the politics of natives are are huge. And uh, mm-hmm. I actually have an un- my uncle uh, Louis Laborn told me um, there's two things you're gonna do. He goes, you're either gonna be poli- you're gonna pick politics. Or you're going to pick the spiritual. You're going to be spiritual or politics. Which one? He goes. You don't. You don't play around with both. And so occasionally I'll get close to that, but I I back up and say, as an artist, as a human, no, I'm gonna stick 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 to spirituality because once you get into politics, you have to fully give yourself to that. And here I am, still doing it. Yeah. That's cool. Um, can we talk about the painting that you gave us that you gifted us with? Yes. Um, real real quick on it, though, I want to know the the process of it. Of, like you explained a little bit with the elk on the the landing of the heart, but what do you think of? You know, do you know you're painting this, or do you know what's what's what, or is it coming to you as your emotion? You're doing push-ups and doing your physical fitness, and then draining yourself. You know. <laughs> yeah. It you know what's I I never I I tried wringing it out once and it smells horrible. Yeah. Never. Other people who do this do not wring out your sweat and save it. I, I, I didn't sweat this. So I scratch and sniff over here. It is. It's so smelly, uh, but in a good way. So the sweat that you're gonna smell, um, I've actually used pre workout, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bring up and show which pre workouts I use. But pre workout is one of our synthetic adrenalines. It's something that people use in the gym. And so those, the, the base color, the beginning color um, is a pre-workout. And then later I add different paint pigments to make it more um, visible, to make it more uh, potent, like that the color pops. But that crane, right, that, that, that crane, and I, I'm not going to say it's native behind, but it was an image that when I felt I seen it, I was like, what the, this is speaking to me. And so I didn't paint that crane until I saw a crane. I actually felt the crane. There's a moment in Europeans, they call it the cross. In our, we have the medicine wheel. But when you're driving down the road and a bird or a crane flies right over you, and at that moment you cross paths, that's why I painted the crane. Um, and I felt like the spirits above were looking down. That, that's a reflection of the crane. It's the same energy and soul, but the person above is the crane. And when it flew, flew over my path, it gave me that good fortune. It gave me the good fortune of the crane. So when it drops, you don't get your brush and... No, he blows on it. You blow on it? Yeah. It, it? Yeah. All those oh, long wow. trails, yeah. that's where the sweat lands. And to say you have to hold your breath and breathe it, well, you're, we're, we're, we're native, right? What is breath? It's, it's life. It's... That man. <laughs> <laughs> he said, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it, so even the colors, like to think yeah. now, right now, we're supposed to be wearing orange to bring attention to uh, Native awareness. That's also part of the, I don't pick the color right away. When I see those things, what I'll do is I'll, I'll grab a color that I feel myself navigate towards. I, I was hurting here on the deer. That, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, see how it's thin? I love that. That's a nosebleed. Oh, it's yeah. it's pain, but it's still beautiful. <laughs> like it's it's Making it's, art it's out of pain. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean it's it's from holding uh you know holding blood wounds. It's from breaking bones and saying no, I'm still gonna survive. Uh, and and that's that's been found constant throughout America's history, um, even before America's history. But they kind of you know you gotta you gotta go and find that out. It's different. But here, yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you. And I gifted that um, because it was one of those things. When I saw you in the gym, I was like, man, this, I got to talk to this guy. This is beautiful. And then you invited me out and I was able to make it to the Chichancy powwow and being able to, to honor me with just helping. I mean, I, 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 that felt amazing. And so that's why it's, it's a gift to you guys because <laughs> to be, I don't think people do that when they go to places and they like, how can I help? You know, I don't, I'm not looking for anything else other than how can I help? Yeah, I'm going to you off there. So we were at a powwow, Chick Chansey powwow up north above Fresno. So 
Uh, I'm working tabulations, right? I'm doing tabulations with my crew. And then he gets there, Joseph gets there, and he's all like, hey, you want to help? Um, I'm here if you need me to help. And I'm like, okay, but, like, do you really want to help? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like hey, are you, do you really want? Because I can put you to work right now because I need some help right now. And he's like, yeah, I want to work, I want to work. So, all right, so um, he basically learned how to do the whole powwow tabulation system and <laughs> learned it in and out the whole two days together, two days of work. Yeah. And, and he yeah. saved my saved my end right there because we were all scrambling <laughs> trying to get stuff done. You know, so you got to go and count count up everything and just having him bring the numbers up after contest, doing tabulations for grand entry, while we're back there calculating it all up and like it was a big help, man. <laughs> uh, you helped me, and and that's I, I was actually thinking labor. I was like, this guy's gonna put me to labor work, and then you oh. made me think. <laughs> and I was like, you are oh my. Wrong. Yeah, yeah he's, I have to use my brain, and 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 still, luckily, other everybody else is su supportive. You know, it was one of those, man. You can go to anywhere else, and they don't do that. You know, they're like, oh, you want to help? Go file the paperwork. Go to this, and maybe we'll do this. And oh, I'm 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 here now. Yeah, so and learn yeah. something, learn new skill too, mm -hmm. and it was pretty fun getting all that done. It's yeah, really well, it's getting. Stuff. Getting, getting out to more of them and getting out to, and here's the crazy part. I don't know if you guys, there's, um, I don't know if you guys ever hear a calling. There was a moment I was on the gym. Like, so I felt called to go and do that because I was asking for, uh, I was up on the treadmill and a, I just felt this urge to call a, a brother I have in North Dakota. And, uh, I'm not going to put his name out or anything like that, but, um, he was going through some shit and sure enough, so was I, but that, I called him up. And he was like, hey, what's going on? And I was like, I just called to hear you. What's going on? Mm. And he's like, well, and he let it all loose. Mm. Thought, man. And he's, he, this is more unique, too. So I had said, yo, Emmy. I had said the name wrong, right? And this brother may be a little younger than me, maybe a little my age. And he humbly was like, hey, I just want to let you know, you said the name, yo, Emmy. You have to pronounce it correctly. It's Yo, Emmy. Yo, Emmy. And then he kind of paused, like, now repeat it. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> Yo, Emmy. And I repeated it. And, and, and this was that thing where in America, we don't, we don't allow that without feeling uh, shame, disgrace, right? Mm -hmm. It's almost like, What the fuck are you telling me? Tell me how to talk. Yeah. That's not how he came at me. He was very, Hey, if we're the same, then you should be, you obligate yourself to know how to do it so we can pass this correctly to everybody else. Mm -hmm. So to him, thank you. And, and I still, you know, I had to hit him up right after this to let him know, you know, I got, to, I got to share that because it made me feel good when he did that. He shared with me also the deer story, um, which I, I won't repeat because I don't know it well enough because I would be dishonoring the story by repeating it wrong. That's just how I feel. Okay. Uniquely enough, I actually wrote down October 17th. I wrote down, In my and it's, it's a messy page. <laughs> You're going to laugh. If, if you guys can read this here, it's this no, one. It. No. Oh, it's backwards. Yeah. Okay. It's back, yeah. So it says, literally, October 17th, ask Johnny about depicting indigenous people. And it's uh, my own responsibility. I feel like, hey, if, just be. How, what do you, why, why not instead of painting, instead of just painting Native Americans, right? Like it's just so um, cool to sit there and, you know, paint images. Is it disrespectful? Is it respectful? How do you honor that at the same time there, there's those math teachers, you know? If I paint this image, is that allowed them permission? And I wanted to ask somebody who actually is a lot closer to the culture than I'm becoming, you know, I'm still becoming closer, but how do you guys feel about artists depicting Native American art? And another question to you is what makes an artist and a Native artist? Should there even be a difference? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, um, no, you go first. Okay. So... <laughs> Going back to the school system and how you said right there about, you know, all we see is the native in their regalia and their old clothes and their thing, right? 
and then somebody always wants to connect with it. Meaning, I'm just talking generalized. Somebody wants to connect, like that teacher in Riverside down the road from us. <laughs> so that wants to connect. So the, how do they connect? They just connect in their own way Google of search. what they think it is because <laughs> the school, the school system, the teacher of the teacher, right? They're in those time periods from decades, don't really understand what they're doing. <laughs> how they're mocking or how they're appreciating or how they're honoring always their key word and they try to protect themselves they don't understand the confliction between the two even natives don't understand the confliction of like i don't know what's on the east coast i'm a west coast guy i don't know it's different tribes so i'm not gonna go oh this is the east coast blah 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 right we have the turtle on our shield and all that so you know i i don't know that's that's their thing i'm not gonna speak for them they're speaking for whatever tribe, what they think it is. So as we go into more modern now, it's kind of better to go in more modern because, you know, show a native with a college degree, show a native in a leadership position. That's how you honor, you know, today's world, right? Even though it's not our world, but we're also making a better future for our kids, for our new leaders coming up, saying that it's a, uh, they could be done. Entrepreneurs could be done. Mem uh, memberships within the tribes could also grow, get stronger, educated, casino. Everybody thinks natives casino all the time. Now it's natives and cannabis now. So <laughs> it's different structure. Yeah. And it's all about keeping things modern now. I feel like Reservation Dogs, just telling, like that show Reservation Dogs, it's freaking funny. It's like, on Hulu. Yep, on Hulu. <laughs> yeah, so watch accurate. it. Like, we all, we all know that. But like a non-tribal person, a non-res person watching that, I'm just like, dude, this is so accurate. <laughs> this is this is how we live. Man. Uh, that's yeah. something to bring up too, which they did a good job on that. You know, yeah, as a, okay. I think is that the term an urban native? Is that what what, what yeah, that's somebody who's from the city? Give the, give the city natives, yeah, but the, yeah, the it's city just, and it's I, just the native, right? Yeah, um, I had those uncles. I had that uncle who was beating up people in my grandpa bar kicking at like what the what the crap oh it was your it was your drugs you know and there's just some good stuff in that one so um going back to um is it okay to draw uh natives um indigenous, indigenous people um i would say uh, you should ask who you're going to draw if it's okay um, it depends on what you're going to do with it too. the drawing, um, what you're going to, like, if you're going to sell it, um, I don't know, you could speak to the person you're going to be drawing, like, if they get compensate, uh, compensation, right? Is that the word? Um, yeah. or you need to sign some like release form, um, whatnot, but, um, you should always, always speak to the person who you're going to draw and just like ask permission. And is it okay? Let them know what you're going to do with it. Even if you're like that, even if you're drawing and them in regalia, I mean, their logos, their symbols on the regalia that oh, you're yeah. putting on there has more that. meaning than the person that exists that you're drawing. Like it speaks more volume. Okay. Yeah. The, the, the day that I, the day that I wrote to ask you this, I had, um, pa I had already I painted a picture, but I noticed that when I painted it, I, I put two arrows on it and I crossed them and I aimed them a certain way. And I thought to myself, I really, I never sweated on it. I still have the painting and I did not sweat on it. And normally I paint something in straight to paint. The universe was like, no, this isn't, you be patient, you know, because if you're depicting something that's literally supposed to be honoring uh -huh. your people, why are you not fully going the full distance and saying, you know what, this can be uh, researched and we find, especially at this time and era where education is so thin. It's almost like as long as an anthropologist, apologist, whatever they, they're called, shows up and they, as long as an old British dude is telling the story, you know, but the moment you get somebody who's not an old British dude telling the story, it's like, hey, you know, it's no longer on National Geographic's. It has to be like posted somewhere, you know, and it's, yeah. So thank you guys. Cause that, that yeah, blew my no mind, problem. you know. And then also, like you said, like, um, learn their story learn that person where they're from what they do so whenever you share that uh painting you have that story to talk about that um and i would say like honor that person by sharing their story and 
speaking of them in a good way. And um, going yeah. to your other question or about a bad way. How what, do you want to do it? <laughs> <laughs> going, going to your second question, like what is a native artist or what? You said, why do they have to be called native yeah. artists or what? Yeah, like let's say you're an artist, right? So I'm an artist, um, but the the world is going to say, oh, well, you're native, so you, you do native art. You're a native artist. And it's like, what if I'm an artist first? And so uh, what is that? What are the differences between, okay, I'm a native artist depicting native art, and I'm actually an artist who happens to identify as being Native American? Oh, that's a good one. It's more of a business term. I'm looking at that. It's more of a business term, like native-owned businesses who oh, are registered uh -huh. with the reservation, with the state, mm -hmm. federal-wise. And then that's how they could get certain grants and all that too. That's just how it looks like. But on the other end, there's native, um, like native jewelry, right? Native American jewelry. That's a business card that they get that they're authentic. So they could say that it has it has more of a title to it of um, authentic. And that's what I'm looking at, like more art wise. Mm. It's yeah. more of a title that gives you more authenticity. That's what it, that's really what it is. But on the other end, when they're labeling you. That's up to you, but <laughs> like what? Well, do you want to? Well, I get where you're coming from. Like, why do you have to say native artist? Like, why can't you just be an artist straight up and be, you know, with everybody? And yeah, I uh, I would be in <laughs> right. the same position as you. It's like, oh well, which one do I go with? So like, why do yeah, you have to be that way? Just call me Joseph. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's my name. It's Joseph. That's what I do. It's I make wet paintings um and it has been i've actually i remember going down to uh hollywood uh with a, with a, a gentleman who was um, a marketing uh, i won't put his name out there but i will put his culture he was jewish um and he specifically was like the moment he heard i was native he was just like what about the number what about this what about that and i had to like slow his roll and be like i didn't come here for that i came here to to talk about how I could handle at the time I felt like sweat painting need to be needed to be marketed. But when you're marketing, this is also, thank you, Johnny. I was looking up how brands and logos have to have substance. And then through that process of, well, if you have substance already, understand the brand and the logo. And I thought to myself deeply, I'm, I'm actually making a practice. Sweat painting is a practice. It's not really a brand. And it doesn't need a logo because the sweat itself is supposed to say, well, if you're a woman today or if you identify as whatever, the sweat saying you're a human being. And, and if, if I could elaborate on that just a tad. Go ahead, um, go ahead. So a male and a female both sweat. And uh, they call this thing a triptych. In the art world, it's a big square and these two little squares. And we see that architecture everywhere in the monoliths, the pre-flood era. Um, and I won't get too much into the pre-flood era, but the world that existed before some of the last catastrophes. All of these structures found in China, Mesoamerica, Egypt, have this big door and these two little doors. And uniquely enough, it's a male, a female, and a large door is this deity that you're supposed to become when you understand the male and the, fem and the female and the male, the positive and the negative. And not saying negative like women are negative. Mm -mm. Take away the maliciousness. It's not malicious, but without without the space and that dark negative void, then you're not going to see a star shine. It's with respect to the woman to say that the negative is actually the ability of a woman to, to take something uniquely from the man, the seed, and to say with that I've taken, I can create something beautiful inside of me and birth life. I mean, that's that true understanding of, okay, women have a role and it's more beautiful. And, and I might not be able to comprehend it because as a male, I'm a tool. I'm actually only meant to give. I'm not necessarily, I don't have the capability of taking and rebirthing life the way a woman would. And having the, the ability to take a soul and channel it into the body and it's so unique and beautiful. And so the positive and negative, when understanding those two things, they, they create balance. And this almost sounds like a lot of our tales, stories of the twins, uh, stories of good and evil, which are Europeans. They love to immediately label positive and negative as good and evil. And it's not. It's, it's, a, lot, it's a lot more beautiful because the negative has no evil 
to it. It's what it's supposed to do. It's like the scorpion. It's supposed to have that death so it can have the life. And so when I make sweat paintings, it's, it's that visual representation of being human is actually saying as a human, when you take a male or a female's body, they will sweat. Sweat is something that will be produced. And that on paper now says that that is the representation of a human being without showing the three images, the visual representation of sweat itself is it is, it just is. And that accompanying with an image I feel should stand alone. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine yeah. just having that sweat painting on a wall and you just look at it and all everything you just said spills out just yeah. from that drawing. That's uh, it's cool. Tears. It's I've, I've, I've worked out and done this in the, you know, in the gym is where I usually paint these. And I've had people come up to me and start crying. Um, I can't explain that, but to say that a human, another human is being moved to tears to actually start crying while they're watching a painting. There's no money involved in this. I'm not, I mean, if, if I was, if I was smart, I'd stand up and be like, Hey, don't be watching. <laughs> you know, you, you're watching, if, if I was in, if I, when I go down to LA and stuff, and this is called performance art, all right, fork it. Um, but it's, it, it's not meant for that. Um, it's totally not meant for that. Even when I'm uh, traveling, I really, my question is to Johnny, we're totally understanding of marketing and business because, you know, I do have to eat. I do have to do things. And then I started understanding. And again, I feel like it was being there. I got a, I got hopefully a job works out here at Chancy, and uh, that job will still pay me money, but this doesn't have to stop. This can keep going because something's financing it other than the art itself. But to say that today, oh, NTFs are a thing, right? These like it's, it's, you can market a, a digital image. At uh -huh. One of one. This is a painting with sweat that has DNA. It has water. It has so much in there. This is a one of one. There is no other way. Like you can't, you can print this and get more images like a clay. Clays are these Im images where uh, a person puts their hands in the ink and they, they load the ink individually and press it out. And it's a very different way of sending something through a copy machine. It, it's a collaboration because you're involving another printmaker. But this is an NTF with the human attributes taking away the digital aspect. And, and do you sell your, your paintings? So the last one I sold was for a thousand dollars. So I can't, I can't drop the price. I know you, so that painting back there, thousand dollars and, and, in the art world, it only goes up. I would be underselling a painting. If I took a 36 by 24 and sold it for 50 bucks, it just devalues it immediately. Mm -hmm. Um, immediately so i at those these ones are and if people want them yeah thousand bucks thousand five hundred they'll start moving up in price so get them now um but <laughs> do you have them available through your instagram or do you have a website That's yeah amazing. straight up yep i got one if you go to my instagram there's a link to my website uh i'm spilling out one more for the powwows.com so uh you showed me the powwows.com so i'm in the process of seeing and getting them pended nice. um this I'm not as good at. I can make the hand <laughs> figures, but they don't know where the fuck they're going. They don't, they don't know what they're doing. Um, but and you, yeah, the, you, and you show all your paintings on there, right? The ones that you have available. A good chunk. There's okay, okay. There was a yeah. I did a painting a day for one year once. There was a year I did a painting a day every day. So there's at the minimum 365 total. I think I'm up to about a thousand now. Yeah. But okay, again. So just so if people go to your Instagram and your website, they'll know it's all listed on there. Oh my gosh, the Instagram, kind of cool. You can actually see in the Instagram where I began and I started, and then there's, there's this moment where I stopped, and then a moment I started up again, and I started using the proper tools. So Instagram's unique because it shows the full story, the, the okay. four years of the development. Cool. Yeah. Do you take custom orders, or is it just you, whatever comes to you in that moment, and you put yeah, I don't, for people I don't mind them. doing, yeah, customs are cool, but they're so, they're not this. I, I you guys also seen my murals. Um, yeah, that mural. Um, yeah, we were going to talk about, yeah. well, I was cool. going to bring it up. 
Let's finish this yeah, real quick and then, and then we'll go into the mural. Uh, so yeah, yeah so uh, no customs. You have your art. You put your art out there. And if it calls the mm -hmm. people, they can go to your website, go to your Instagram. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, definitely. Just so yeah. we're aware and people know what, to, uh, what to expect. And um, so going into the mural, so... Backstory for everybody listening, um, Johnny and I were traveling up to Fresno. We were going to Sacramento, and we happened to stop in Fresno. We were going to look at this other uh, mural, and we have Bobby Von Martin. Yes, Bobby the Martin brothers mural, and we went around the block to find parking, and then I saw Maya Well on the other side, and then I was like, "Oh, that's cool! I'm going to take a picture with that." And I was pregnant with Jackson, and then. Yeah. Um, I didn't know the whole story of her yet because I was, I was still learning. I was still learning. And yeah, I just saw acid painting and I was like, let me just take a picture with her. And then afterwards I realized, oh my God, it's a woman breastfeeding her baby. And then I slowly started touching in on her and learning about her. And then I just thought it was so cool. After that, I was like, I was like, man, that was a, a mom breastfeeding her baby. And like, I'm pregnant. And I thought it was so Vanessa. cool. And Yanessa was still like one or two. No, that was, that was your pregnant. One. No, that was with Jackson. Mm -hmm. Wow, it was that long ago. Wow, okay, so I didn't know I painted that that long ago. But it wasn't just me. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, no, it was with Jackson. And so, um, so you know, like a year or two goes by, and then, um, and I couldn't tag the artist. I even posted it on there. I was like, oh, I can't tag the artist because I don't know because you were still in the process of it. You had just yeah. done it, or that was like halfway through it. And so then yeah. when uh, two years go by, and then when you met Johnny at the gym, then we found out who you were. And I was like, oh my God, that's him. And what were the odds? What were the odds that right? I was the, the, <laughs> and, and, and it was, so I had a, a Anthony, uh, Pete, and we had another female artist. And we, we had, we had a murals or collaborative, it, and that's that's why they're they're made. They're not supposed to just be one person. But we were doing that to honor women, uh, to honor our mothers. Uh, that's why. And then most people don't notice that she's breastfeeding, right? We got a huge mural up with a woman breastfeeding. And, and to, <laughs> to Europeans and Americans right now, it's like, ooh, uh, should women be allowed to breastfeed? And she did it. Man, get out of here. That's her role. That's like, first off, if you're a dude, like, you shouldn't be tripping, you know, and you should be able to get your emotions and check if a woman's yeah. taking care of her yeah, child. It's not sexualizing it. It's feeding a baby. Exactly. And, and why, why should we, why shouldn't, why, they shouldn't feel shamed, uh -huh. you know, and, and that's a big deal. So we painted that mural specifically for that. The rest of the team finished the mural because we just kept traveling. But oh. that, that was what we, oh. They want, they started adding more to it. So there's a beautiful little hummingbird that got finished on the side. Oh. And I just, all those artists are amazing, but murals themselves. Uh, if you go to Fresno city, I was with another team and I, I painted a mural. Uh, we painted a mural because it was a team of a turtle. And on the back of the turtle are three elephants. And on the back of that elephant is a paint palette. And so the idea that humans will explain the world, however they want. If the world is on the back of a turtle, the world's on the back of a turtle. Mm -hmm. And if the turtle has three elephants on top of that, then that's how the, I don't need to, I have to go and get food. I, I really don't need to jump out there in space and ask the turtle how it's doing carrying the planet on itself. It's just silly and, and meaningful at the same time, because if, the, if humans take a minute in America and, and everywhere else and say, you know what, the earth is still on the back of a turtle. And my turtle will die if it has dirty water. So maybe if the earth goes back to being on the back of a turtle, I'll clean the water and stop putting oil in it. You know, it, it starts to raise, a, raise awareness. That was my, my speech impediment from school. Um, it starts to raise awareness. And that's the process of art itself. Uh, I, I just unfollowed some artists um, in, down in L.A. because it was pornographic. That's it. I don't care how many pieces of paint or what you want to label it as. I'm just not okay with that. And I didn't like that that gallery that is a fine art gallery is promoting something that I would have seen in a dirty magazine if I was a little kid still playing around with dirty magazines. 
You know, like that's just not appropriate. It's not, it's not appropriate, but uh -huh. yeah, no, go ahead. Well, it was the difference, like what, uh, versus inappropriate and inappropriate. Just at appropriate. We were just speaking about um, a mom breastfeeding and I know it's feeding, but like just to conversate about so that. I if I were to add, because I couldn't, I couldn't necessarily say it's a, like, again, upon observation, if I see a painting, this painting that I saw was of uh, men having a rope loosely tied around their body and they were turned around and it was their butts. And so I felt like the painting itself was alluding towards, it felt like it was alluding towards um, perversion and the harming of another human being. They, they didn't, the, the, the people on the painting might possibly be victims and they weren't looking like victims either. They had this very Weinstein look. That's the best way to say it. It was like, dude, dude, this is a warning call. If I walked into a dude's house and I saw that on his wall, I'd be like, hey, hey, come here. Are you, are you, are you a predator? Because that's just not acceptable. Um, and that's where that line kind of gets blurred. And it's scary to think we are in a gray zone today. In today's world, we're in such a gray zone because you can be Damien Hurst. And I'm not bagging on Damien Hurst. What I'm saying is you can be a well-known artist to pick something. And now everybody thinks it's okay. And if you don't take that responsibility to say, hold up, I painted this with this awareness. Um, I'm painting this to, to stop human trafficking, not to start human trafficking. And that's where it was just like unique because I didn't want to, I, again, I don't bag on any artists. It took me a long time to understand that if you're going to be an artist who shits on the art world, it means it's not working for you. And you're just like upset. You're projecting your fears. But to say that Damien Hirst, Andy Warhol, I've been, I've been called Yoko Ono. And I thought she was just the lady who broke up the Beatles. <laughs> Yoko Ono is the wife of John, former wife of John Lennon, because John Lennon passed away. Um, but she, um, she was at a... I don't know what the Beatles are. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, oh Beatles, I know of the Beatles, but that's it. Yeah, no, that's totally cool. They were big in pop stars in the England and then later in America. But like, again, where's the relevance? The relevance was they did last a good amount of time. But today, um, not unless you do some historical digging, they're not relevant. And that's a that's a big thing because I don't I love knowing of the past, but you can't live in the past. I believe we even have a story about walking backwards like you walk backwards in life and you're going to catch the backwards um, consequences. When you walk forward in life, you'll catch the forward consequences and both consequences, not uh, malicious, but consequences of your actions. And so being called Yoko Ono, I had to look up Yoko Ono and be like, was this person insulting me? Are they fucking, is that a bad word? What, what is Yoko Ono? Is that like egg yolk? What, what's on me? Um, and it's not what, what they were trying to do is say that the work I do and the performance art I make is akin to that. It's similar. Um, and so instead of just bagging on all those artists, what I'm going to do is stand on their shoulders and, and use them and say, look, Damien Hurst is a, an interesting artist. Um, and his time's over. It's uh, it's, it's his moment to kind of move over here and let other artists, not just myself, but other people stand on his shoulders. The same with the Mona Lisa. It's a, it's a beautiful painting that did a, a lot for a long time. Leonardo da Vinci never gave it. He paid for the, he got the money for the painting and he never gave it. He traveled the world with, with the Mona Lisa going around showing people saying, hey, look at how awesome this is. Look at how awesome this is, right? <laughs> and he never gave it. That's, that's some bad arting. Um, and so that's that weird process of saying, okay, well, I'm not going to hurt them by saying that they don't need to be relevant, but it is time for that Mona Lisa to kind of be scooted over and not just to have my painting up. What if somebody else makes a sweat painting? It's just as valid. Let's say somebody else who's carrying more weight. Cause I love doing pushups. I love working out. Um, but if somebody else is in the gym and they're working out hard too, and it's a more of a challenge, that's more, I think that's more beautiful. Um, there's a, there's an artist right now who's, uh, taking canvases and she wraps it around a punching bag and she punches it, kicks it, knees it. It's fucking, it's cool. I love it. And what, what makes it even more cool for me is to know that if I were to punch a picture, it's not a champion. Her name's Tiffany Timebomb. She, she actually has 
a, a Muay Thai champion belt. Oh. Well, that's a trained fighter. She, she's literally honing those skills to say that that fist does a specific damage. And my fists, as, as rough and ragged as they are, I don't sit there and put that time and effort in. And if she does, then the value changes. Her painting, oh. right? Yeah. So if you, if you sweat on something, you're, you're a mother, you're, you have a family, right? And all of a sudden you take time out of your life to sweat on something. You don't kick puppies. Um, you're not like a bad person. Well, maybe that should change the value of sweat itself, oh. which brings up the, the conversation of sweat equity. Um, sweat equity is something if in America, I would love that when I was busting my ass in general labor and construction work, if my boss walked by and was like, Hey, lunchtime was happening and you were still working. I'm going to pay you extra because you busted your ass more. Or here's a good one. The other guy that was working right now, he knew that he could get out of work if he talked to me all day. And he did. And end of the day happens and you did all of his work. So you're getting his pay. So at equity. And right now we're ignoring that. We're ignoring all the people in America who work. And, and all of a sudden the paper pusher who, who that's cool. You learn how to do paperwork, but you're not putting in the actual life expectancy shortening. You're shortening your lifespan when you work hard. And if you can function on paperwork really well, that might not be as taxing. So why are we charged? Why are we paying you less? Um, and so it's just a conversation. All I really want to do is ask a more beautiful question. I don't really got a lot of answers, but if I could just ask a more beautiful question and get more humans to, to ask questions. Awesome. Yeah. What's the, what's the artist's name that punches? Oh, Tiffany time bomb. If it's, if you guys could put, yeah, put a link or put something on her work. Uh, it's a, uh, it's amazing. I, I, ran into her or we, we interacted as peers online and I didn't know she was a champion. I just saw her paintings and oh. she was like, your paintings are cool. I was like, your paintings are really cool. Um, <laughs> and then before I knew it, I like went to her link page and said she was a fighter. And I, I love him. I love MMA. I like bodybuilders don't get paid, but they do their artwork. They love bodybuilding MMA fighters, UFC fighters, and Muay Thai fighters do not get paid a lot, but they do it from here. Mm. So, Artists. A lot of us are the starving artists, right? We, we love doing this, but we don't make money off of it. But I just feel this, this need to create. Same thing. And so I feel like there's a, a lot of stereotypes that we have to kind of pull apart and say, this is so much like this. How come we're not assisting as, as, as humans? How come we're not providing a better sense of self? And I feel like her artwork gives you that sense of self where it's like, what is my, what does my punch look like? You know? And, and wow. it was it stop, like just so much. And, and I'm not, I'll bite you. You know, I'll, I poke you. <laughs> uh, she won't. She probably has like this fist or kick that like knocks you out. And yeah, I, I deeply appreciate her artwork and a lot of other artists. Um, I, I will, I won't stand here and, and toot my own horn too much because other, other individuals, that's what makes me happy is because I'm not the only person that sweats. If I wanted this all about me, every picture would be my face. Every picture would be me. Mm. Some of them that are me are my self reflections, but all these pictures I want to help other people see that their sweats worth it. Their effort in life is worth it and they deserve to be heard. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, hit the camera by accident. Um, mm -hmm. but this is your moment here, okay? This is you. This is all about you right now. Just like what you do, um, why you do it, and it's it's pretty cool. I'm so glad you spoke to Johnny. We met you. Um, your whole sweat painting, awesome, so cool. Uh, every story that you that you shared. Um, do you have a favorite painting there with favorite. you or? You know what? I have a favorite artist, and so I will paint his paintings. He's I, he passed away already. Um, that's so funny because his this is one of his paintings. So this isn't my painting. This is one of his paintings, and I repainted it, and then I put my sweat on it. So I wouldn't sell this. This is just like the native discussion we had earlier because this is a replication or fan art. This is fan art. 
Uh-huh. Right. So his name's Frank Frazetta. And um, if you guys remember Conan the Barbarian, um, I'm trying to think of all those cool movies where you see like a big buff dude and you see like the lady on the leg. National Lampoons did a, a spoof on it. it. Right. But he's, the, he, he's that guy. He's oh. the guy who just, he made all these, uh, and some of them are, are inappropriate today, considering we just had that discussion. So if I saw his paintings today, I'd be like, dude, why are you only drawing women that have this shape? You know, because that's a specific shape, but that's what he liked. And that's, that's unique to say too, is what, as an artist, I don't want to generalize males or females. So I don't want to depict and say, this is the body type that I want to see or the body type I like. Every body type exists. So this artist, so Frank Rosetta, is like, instead of Leonardo, instead of all these other artists, I mean, I was inspired by He-Man. I was inspired by a single mom who busted her ass. I had uncles that beat me up for my birthday. Like, that was your birthday gift. Hey, it's your birthday? Come on. You know, and when my uncle broke his rib, he couldn't come over to my, like, 24th birthday. And so he showed up with a taser. And he tased me for my birthday. It was, it was, yeah, but that's, that's love. That's, that's how they expressed it back then. And so uh, Frank Rosetta is my, my favorite artist. And there's, there's one other artist um, that she, she probably tops Frank Rosetta. She, right. This is even more beautiful. It's a woman. Um, And so in today's art world, it's today's art world. It's really unique to, to think that a woman is going to be held in high esteem. And she is, her name is Deb Zat. And I met her at the power con, which is the He-Man convention. And yeah, I had to go. It was my first He-Man convention. I didn't, like, I was so happy. And there was a guy named Tom T there and it was his table. And I walked by and I didn't know it was his table. And I see Deb Zat sitting there and um, I go, Hey, is this yours? And she goes, Oh no, it's my husband's. I just colored them. You colored these? And she's like, yeah, you know, she's an older woman. She's in my Instagram page. You guys will see me taking the fuck, a picture with her. And I'm so happy because <laughs> she's the woman who colored all the He-Mans, the deep purples, the blues, right? I, my subconscious was her age and it was seeing He-Man because my mom let me watch He-Man. So my subconscious is layered with colors that make me feel alive. They create this, this, uh, fantasy, this illusion, this beautiful world. And so Deb Zapp, back in the 80s, they didn't really give women credit for what they did. And she's sitting right there in front of me. She's the woman who painted He-Man. She colored this amongst other humans, but she's there. So I'm, I'm getting all up like this. I'm getting really giddy and excited to be like, can, can you sign something? Tom T, her husband, walks by and he's like, hey, how you doing? And I, I I didn't care. I actually told him, it's, I don't really care about you right now, man. I'm look, I'm talking to Deb. And then she's like, this is my husband. And I'm like, Oh, I didn't mean to dis-. I actually left and came back, looked up Tom T and was like, Hey, I, I apologize deeply for not respecting you and the vast artwork that you've done. But your wife, Deb Zat is the woman that um, inspired me to make sure that I picked the right colors. And later, uh, you know, I still do these things, but, She's she's probably my favorite artist. So to say I have a favorite painting, they're all my favorites. But these humans, Deb Zat and Frank Rosetta, are my art parents. These are the art parents that I had. And and in those in the art world, you don't really want to follow the examples. So most of my paintings don't look like Frank Rosetta's, Mm -hmm. and they don't look like Deb Zat's. What I would be is the creation of both positive and negative. You know, I took those two art parents. And I let that fold in my brain. I take artists like Kevin Stewart McGee and a few other ones, and I allow them to layer on information. And the more information I get layered as an artist, there we go. Now, now I'm just creating. Cool. And how long have you been doing this sweat painting? Sweat painting for about four years. Cool. Painting. I used to tattoo for like, I tattooed for about nine years. Cool. I, I sewed pants, so like I could actually sew you a pair of pants, you know, because males, males' pants are different than, than female pants um, because they have four different sides to sew. So my beginning art was actually fashion designing. I, I, I was a young kid sewing clothes everywhere, uh, sewing anything, and 
just being supportive. Uh, my mom and, and her brothers were very supportive. Uh, and my, my personal brother, Samuel Jernigan, he, he, these guys, um, and my family today, my sons, their mom, I wouldn't be here if they didn't help. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're going to be wrapping it up. Um, cool. Did you want to share anything, say anything that we haven't touched up on real quick? Or any last you know, words? If, if, uh, if this helps, I want to tell that quick story of that coyote this morning. Because um, it it's really short, but it's one of those things that I wanted to share with people who are, are learning that there's, there's indigenous... You're, Everybody's indigenous, but right now you're on specific people's land, right? There's a historical awareness. Um, but to say that the universe was talking to me this morning, so I was going to go and jam out to something and, and take care of the errand that I felt rushed to take care of. And right as I hit out my driveway, a coyote ran across the road right in front of me. The trickster was just like, <laughs> and to say that the trickster was doing that, it's like, wait a minute, what's the, tr what's the trickster? <laughs> Wherever I was going, I wasn't supposed to be. I needed to turn my butt around, sit down, and chill out. And so that's the same as seeing a red-tailed hawk, seeing a deer. If you, if you have a spider that falls in your bathtub, just pick your spider up and, and don't let them get wet. Take them outside. I mean, there's, there's no reason to hurt life around you. Right now, my, my art shows, I love doing my art shows. Um, they're, they're upon observation is what I'm calling them. And I'm taking my artwork out and I'm just setting it up like if it was a real art show, but I'm setting it up for everything else in the world other than humans. If a human sees it, cool. But right now, the creators in the sky, the rocks, the earth, the mother earth. I mean, there's so many things that get, why, why doesn't the eagle get to enjoy the art? What, what about the raven? I keep having all these ravens showing up over here and they, 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 they deserve it. They're awesome. And so I wanted to share that with you guys. If you see a coyote, that means don't, don't do it. Whatever you were planning, you know, and then all the other signs. And, 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 and I wanted to thank you guys specifically. So the understanding of growing that as people depict Native Americans in today's modern world, ask. Especially because today uh, we just heard that their regalia and, and the things that they have on, that's who they are. And if we were depicting, depicting them and we don't make clear how we're depicting them and why we have that knowledge to depict them, we shouldn't. Um, that's a big deal. And I myself am going to be including that into my artwork. The knowledge that I just learned today, I get to take and say, okay, um, making sure that I keep that close because you shared that with me and it helps me grow as a human being. And that's what I'm looking for. We have life. Yeah. Why we do these podcasts too, also to share all that knowledge too. Some people ask the same questions out there too, and hopefully they learn and say something in the chat too, and they got something on their mind, and it's always good to grow together. Okay. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> He's getting impatient, so let's close uh, this out. Uh, yep. Joseph, thank you so much you. for coming Bye. on here. Share your story. Share your story. Okay, close Thank you guys for letting me have on here. We'll All right. Thanks I'll for, see you later. Bye, website. everybody. Check them out, everybody. Sweat painting. Sweat painting. <laughs> yep, check it out. All right, All right. you guys, later. Okay, bye. Thanks. All right, guys. So thanks for joining us on episode 21. Glad to see you all back again. <laughs> Should be back next week. <laughs> yep. We have another person scheduled up for next week, too. So we'll get a confirmation on that and get everything going. So, Lisa. Bye. Lisa. Bye. Bye. Bye.